Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to get started with Easy Titles 5. In this tutorial I will show you the basics of how to configure the software and how to do the spotting. Let's start with defining the basic project settings. When you start a new file, the project settings window shows up. You can also find it later when you go to File, Project Settings. As a subtitler, you probably work for different clients who have different requirements as regards subtitle settings. Easy Titles allows you to define a different template for each client so that you don't need to change the settings each time you run the software. You can even create groups of templates if you wish. So let's create a new template now with new settings. So I click on the New and give it a name. and I could include it in my educational template. We'll now go over the basic parameters that you can see in the tabs on top here. The first thing you choose is a type of project, the type of subtitles you create, whether it's DVD, cinema, etc. You can also choose a video format and a frame rate here. The program will automatically recognize the video format and the frame rate, and it will prompt you if there are any inconsistencies in the project settings. Let's have a look at the next tab, Safe Area. Here you can choose the maximum number of characters per line, which I hear this project defined as 38 characters per line. In the Subtitles tab, you can choose the alignment. If you want your subtitles to appear in the center, this is where you need to click. Another important setting is the reading speed, which you can conveniently choose in either characters per second or in words per minute, depending on the commission from your client. Please make sure you tick the option Count Spaces. Finally, in the uh, last tab, Cues, you define how many frames you want to have as a gap between consecutive subtitles. So let's say two frames. You can also decide on the minimum and maximum duration of a subtitle. If you don't have any idea what to choose, a pretty good guess for the minimum duration would be one second or 25 frames here. And uh, for the maximum five or six seconds, I have chosen six, that is uh, 150 frames here. You can also define how many frames before a cut or a shot change a subtitle should end and how many frames after a short change a new subtitle can begin. For this demonstration, uh, this will do. We will not go into other details in the project settings. When you've done defining the settings, make sure you save them. So I click here and click yes and OK. To open a video file, you need to go to Video Open and you can double click on the video you need. Make sure in this box here you have exactly the same time code as is displayed on the first frame of the video. So it's 01070009. OK. To play a video, you need to press the Alt key and the right arrow. To pause the Alt key and the down arrow, this is what I'm going to demonstrate now. Susan, I'm uh, by the orange stand. You can navigate through the video with frame by frame accuracy. Try using the Alt key and the up arrow to move forward frame by frame, or the Alt key and the down arrow to move backwards. The Alt and the left arrow will rewind the file. As you can see, we are now in the main working area of the program, the Subtitler's workspace. There are a number of panels here. The largest window is the video and the current subtitle area. To add text to a subtitle, you simply type it in this window here. The previous subtitle will be displayed above and the next one below the main uh, video area. You can also see the duration as well as an in and out times of the current subtitles in the center of the screen, of course, once we've uh, done some subtitles. On the right hand side, there is the preview panel and uh, you'll be able to see the list of all the subtitles here. Below the video, we have the timeline. You can navigate through the video by dragging the icon here. And this navy blue wave is called the audio wave and it shows you all the sounds and dialogues in the video. It can be conveniently zoomed in and out. It's very helpful with visualizing where to place your subtitles. 
the yellow vertical lines indicate shot changes or cuts. There are two modes in Easy Titles, Edit and Preview. When you're doing your spotting, choose the Edit mode by either clicking on the tab right here or by pressing F9. In the Preview mode, you'll be able to play your subtitles together with the video. Now I'm going to show you how to do what is known as spotting, timing or cueing the subtitles, which basically means deciding when your subtitle should begin and when it should end. There are different ways of going about this and different people prefer different methods so you need to discover what works for you. Uh, some of you may not even need this as you will be working with ready-made templates with time codes. In the first method you manually define each in time and out time of a subtitle. This is done using a few keys on the numeric keypad. If you use a laptop which does not have a numeric keypad please have a look at notes for notebook users in the Easy Titles manual there are different keys that can be used instead. You can uh, even define your own keys. So let's assume we don't have a transcription and we have to listen to what is being said in the video and transcribe it as subtitles. I'm going to play the video and pause when I think a first subtitle should appear. So, so I think we should start here. So I'm going to press enter on the numeric keypad to define the in time that is the beginning of the subtitle. Then I move to where I think the subtitle should end so I'm going to listen to what he's saying and put it down. Susan, I'm uh, by the orange stand. Where are you? So this is exactly where he finished speaking. So I'm going to press the insert key on the numeric keypad in order to define the end of the subtitle. As you can see, we have the first uh, subtitle here. We can drag this subtitle if we think we need to move it. I really recommend uh, learning different keyboard shortcuts. Let us move on to the next subtitle. You navigate between subtitles using page up and page down button. So I'm going to play the video and stop again when he starts saying something. So this is where another subtitle will begin. So I press enter on the numeric keypad. And I can see I have already two subtitles. The first time code here is the beginning of the subtitle. The other numbers, this is the duration. And here, this is the end of the subtitle. So I'm going to listen to what he says. Cheese then. Okay. I can now either press the insert key on the numeric keypad in order to create the end of the subtitle. I can also press the delete button, which is situated between enter and insert on the numeric keypad. What this will do is it will insert the end of the current subtitle and the beginning of the next subtitle, remembering about the gap between consecutive subtitles that we defined in a project setting. So I'm now going to press the delete key here. And as you can see, we've got the end of the subtitle and the beginning of the next one. So I'm going to continue. No, I don't mind you going back for free samples. All right, and I press delete again because his utterance continues. If you like it so much, why not just buy some? Okay, and now I can press insert because it doesn't continue. There's no utterance a few frames after that. Let's move on. Yeah, of course, you're right. So I'm going to press enter here. Of course, you're right. Yes, of course, you're right. And now I'm going to show you one more shortcut. Instead of pressing the insert key or the delete key to end my subtitle, what I can do, I can press the little star, the asterisk on the numeric keypad. What this has done is it has inserted the end of my subtitle, taking into account the optimum reading speed, the optimum 
display time of this subtitle. All right, so this is the first method of spotting. So you just go one by one and define the in and out times manually. Make sure that numlock is pressed on the numeric keypad, otherwise this will not work. Let us have a look at the indicators here. Under the current subtitle, you can see a red line with some green area and a green diamond shaped duration indicator. Make sure the diamond is green and it is located in the green area. If the diamond is red, like here, it means that the subtitle duration is either too short, as in this case, or it is too long as in this case. Before we move on to another spotting method, let me turn your attention to two types of error indicators that you will probably see a lot. All right, now let's have a look at those two types of indicators. If you move your cursor to this icon, you'll see a message explaining the problem. Duration is below minimum duration, that is below one second. So this little clock icon tells you that your subtitle is either shorter than the minimum duration you set for the project. In our case, it is less than 25 frames or one second, or that it is too long, that is longer than six seconds. We can see that this subtitle now is 18 frames, so it needs to be at least 25 frames. Okay, the other icon, tells you that the duration of your subtitle is below the lower reading speed limit. It means that viewers will not have enough time to read the text in the subtitle with its current duration. So there are basically two ways in which you can solve this problem, either extend the duration of a subtitle or cut the text. So we can extend the duration here. So I can either start the subtitle a little bit earlier and I'm navigating now using the plus and minus keys on the numeric keypad to define the beginning of the subtitle. If I do the same with shift, shift and minus and shift and plus, I'm extending the duration of this subtitle and now I don't have this error indicator. Let me now show you another quick way of defining the in and out times of subtitles using the space bar. I'm going to delete the subtitles that we've uh, just created and using Control, Alt and Backspace to do that. We will need to switch to the preview mode. So we either press F9 or click on the tab here at the top. So in this method, we play the video and you do the spotting on the go. That is, we press the space bar when we want our subtitle to begin and we hold it for as long as we want the subtitle to last. When we release the spacebar, we will define the end of our subtitle, but we need a text first. Let's try this method using a dialog list. So I've got my text here, I copy it and I paste it here. I right click uh, on the preview list. I select paste subtitles, text only because I don't have any time codes. I insert them at current position and I click OK. So I've got my text now and I'm going to play the video and I'm going to press the space button to insert the in and out times of the subtitles. Susan, I'm uh, by the orange stand. Where are you? The cheese stand? No, I don't mind you going back for free samples, but if you like it so much, why not just buy some? Yeah, of course, you're right. It always tastes better when it's free. Okay, then please hurry. All right, so this is what it looks like. You can see I've already created a few subtitles. Of course, now is the time to make sure that I haven't got any error indicators. This method, some people find, is a much faster than uh, the previous one. Regardless of the spotting method you use, you will probably conduct a few simple operations on your subtitles along the way. In order to have a good layout with semantic chunks together, you can move the text between the lines, press the control key and down arrow or control key and up arrow. I'm going to show you on this example. So I'm pressing the control key and the down arrow and it moves each word from the first line to the next line. So you don't need to press enter to do that. Sometimes you will probably need to split a subtitle into two separate ones. In order to do this, you stand where you want to split so I'm standing here at the end of the first line and I press Control, Alt and Enter. 
To do the opposite, that is to merge two subtitles together, you stand at the end of the first subtitle and then press Ctrl Alt and the equal sign and then your subtitles will be merged. You will find all those shortcuts and more in the manual. You can also have a look at the Edit Preferences section as well as Tools, Customize, there are a number of options that you can explore for yourself. Now uh, that we've created our subtitles, we need to save them in a subtitle file. So we go to File, Save As, and the default file type is Easy Titles, so I'm just going to save it as Tutorial 1. Depending on the requirements of your client, you will probably need to export your subtitles to another format like STL. In order to do that, you go to File, Export, and then you choose the file format that is necessary. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video tutorial. You can explore more options by reading the manual. I hope you'll enjoy using Easy Titles. It's really easy.